All right, everybody, welcome back. I'm Dave Hayes, and this is Hayes Tech. This is the channel where we talk about pretty much anything tech, and I do mean anything tech. Okay, on my last video, I did a video on the XTU X1 action camera. And in that video, I told you all that I thought that camera had just as good of image stabilization as my GoPro Hero 7 Black. And in my opinion, it does. So, what we're going to do in this video, I'm going to put my words to the test. We are going to put the XTU X1 action camera against my GoPro Hero 7 Black. So don't go away. And as always, if you liked my video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you saw, think about subscribing. And if you subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell icon. That way you get a notification of my videos as soon as I release them. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to take my XTU X1 action camera and I'm going to put it head to head with my GoPro Hero 7 Black. Now, I wish I had a newer GoPro to put this camera up against, but I don't. This is what I have. But from everything that I've seen, the image stabilization really got good when GoPro hit the GoPro Hero 7 Black. But I really don't think that it is like night and day difference between the GoPro Hero 7 Black and the brand new offering from GoPro right now. Now, before I go any further, um, I got a couple things I want to say quickly. Whenever I hit 5,000 subs, I'm going to be giving my Canon T6i to one of you. So, you know, get sub, spread the word. All right, that's enough said about this. The second thing I wanted to say, because I know some of you are going to notice it. Yes, my right eye is slightly swollen, but I'm not waiting any longer to get this video done. Uh, for some reason, uh, on the last day that I was editing my video for the XTU uh, X1, uh, my right eye started to swell up for some reason. I don't know why, but you know, it is what it is. Anyways, but in this video, what we're going to do first off is I'm going to put these two cameras in place of my Canon M50 right there and we're gonna see how those cameras look if we're using them as like a studio camera first okay then after that we're gonna take the cameras outside now I don't think I can do it today because it's not very nice out and I want to make sure I give both of these cameras the best chances of getting the highest quality of video that I can out of both the cameras and to do that you need sunshine and it, there is no sunshine out today now, before we get into the video quality test of both these cameras, I just wanted to go over some of the features on both of the cameras first, okay? Now, it shoots in 4K, 60 frames per second, just like the XTU. It shoots in 2.7K, 30 and 60 frames per second, just like the XTU. In 1080p, they both go up to 120 frames per second. In 720p, they both go to 240 frames per second. Now, for the GoPro Hero 7 Black, in order for you to change view aspects, you actually have to uh, get into the camera settings and say whether you want super wide, wide, medium, or narrow. And of course, on the XTU X1, all you have to do is just hit the plus and minus on the screen, and that will crop in and give you that same effect. I'm going to be running both of these cameras on their widest field of view. That way, you all can see how wide these cameras shoot because I know that's a big deal to a lot of you especially if you're shooting outdoors and you're using these cameras for more of what they were meant to be for and that's an action camera you want a really wide field of view and I think that is going to be one area that the XTU X1 falls short because it doesn't have you know quite as wide a shot as some of the other action cameras on the market you know like GoPro GoPro in my opinion was the king of the action cameras they started it all and then everybody started copying them now with how good they did when they started copying them that's where we get into the cameras where I've been reviewing because basically what I'm doing is I'm saying if you can't afford to get a GoPro try one of these these are you know close to a GoPro you know, or in this case with the XTU X1, I'm saying this one is as good as a GoPro, but you're not paying 
$400, well, $399. You're paying, and from what I can see, if you go onto XDU's website and you buy it right from them, it's $200. But if you go to Amazon, and I'll put a link in the video description below, you can get them for $179, okay? And if you shop around, uh, I think I saw one XTU on eBay. So you might want to check eBay out. You may be able to get a used one for, you know, about $120 to $150, depending on, you know, whether it's just open box or something like that. Anyways, guys, I'm blabbing, <laughs> blabbing. So we're going to go ahead and get on with this video. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and take these cameras and I'm going to put them over here and replace my M50 with those. Now, if you notice, I have them on my rig where both cameras are setting on the tripod side by side and I'll be using that same tripod when I take it outside to do the vlogging test so okay so without further ado let's go ahead set these cameras over there and let's see what they look like if you're going to use them for a studio camera all right I have both cameras setting on a tripod over there and we're going to go ahead and see what they look like now so what do you guys think the GoPro is on this side and the XTU is over here. Now I tried to get their view angles to be as close to each other as I possibly could. What we're looking for now is basically color and contrast, okay? Shadows, things like that. How defined are my features? How defined are the background features? Can you use either one of these cameras as a vlogging camera or a main camera? for your YouTube videos. And we're gonna show you all, is it worth it? Is saving yourself $200 plus, in some cases, worth it? I know a lot of people that are shooting professionally are gonna say, you know what, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and get the dang GoPro, and I don't have to worry about it. But here you go. You guys can see the image for yourself. You know, what do you think? Now, this is, again, if you are going to use these cameras, as an indoor studio camera okay and again i showed you on my last video i used the xtu x1 as a studio camera and i thought it did a great job now when i set that up i hit the plus button to you know crop it in to make it look like the rest of the cameras i did look on the gopro and it does not have that plus and minus you know where you can hit the plus sign and it tightens or widens your view while recording so it doesn't have that i remember my last video i said that xtu has that no other camera does and then i got to thinking after the video was done uh man you know am i wrong about that but i do know for a fact at least the gopro hero 7 does not have that so um i think what's really going to open your eyes as far as you know there are cameras out there as good as gopro is when we take these outside and you see the image stabilization now one thing i want to say before we do that one thing you've got to remember is you know image quality isn't everything okay yes you want to have good image quality look at me i went out and bought a canon 90d because i wanted the best image quality i could get but when it comes to making a good video audio is key you've got to have as good of audio as you can possibly get okay and then the story is kind of second okay because you've got to have a story that or a video that has um content that somebody's going to want to be interested in okay that's number two but then after that then is you know your video quality and to be honest with you as long as your video quality looks decent people are going to watch it okay and again, these are going to be shooting in 4K 60. Now, I'm going to be down sampling these to uh, 4K 30 because you don't need to have 60 frames per second if you're just sitting here yakking away. You know, it, that just makes a really huge file. Now, I'm also going to be putting these cameras in 1080p, 120 frames per second, and trying to get some slow motion footage. And I will be testing both of these cameras in 720p in 240 frames per second colors and face tones skin tones things like that yes they're going to be a little different for each one because i have them both set at their factory settings uh, yes i could change the color temperatures to get them a little bit closer but i don't want to do that i want you guys to see the differences between these cameras now with that said what we're going to do is we're going to take these cameras outside and i'm going to leave them on the same rig pretty much i'm going to show you what it would look like if you're using them to vlog with 
and I'll show you, I'll spin it around and I'll show you what it would look like if you were using it away from you, more like an action camera. And what we're focusing on here, in my opinion, is the image stability. So image stability and image quality. I've been blabbing long enough, guys. What do you say we go ahead, grab these two cameras, take them outside, of course not right now because the sun's not shining, but you won't know that, it'll be like that. But we're gonna take these cameras outside in the sun and let's go ahead and uh, and put them through the works so let's take these cameras outside okay well man i'm going to tell you what i had the worst luck as far as weather goes so what we're going to do is take these out for a walk right now and i'm going to show you guys what the image stabilization looks like and let you guys see the differences between these two cameras okay so here we go just letting you guys see what it looks like i'm just going to go for a little walk here finally <laughs> i get sunshine again i had to do this like three or four times already because of lighting conditions i mean just all kinds of things just really messing with me basically what i'm trying to do is show you guys what it looks like as far as image stabilization goes on these two cameras and remember i shake really really bad so if anybody can put these cameras to their test as far as image stabilization goes that's me now I also want to turn this around and show you what it looks like you know if you're just gonna use this as like an action camera on a bike in a car you know your doom buggy I don't know out walking so let's go ahead and turn this around now okay there we are this is what you can expect and of course I want to put the Sun at it as well but this is what you can expect shooting in 4k 60 frames per second with your image stabilization turned on on both of these cameras I'm gonna tell you what <laughs> I had so many issues while trying to record this video <laughs> The first time I actually had, and it was all with the XTU, and it was my fault. Um, the XTU really shines when you start taking control of the camera. But with that said, um, I, again, I kind of wanted to do these videos with both these cameras on their automatic settings. Because, you know, I just kind of wanted to let you all see what it looked like if you just pulled these out of the box set up your stabilization and all that and just hit the record button and went you know because not all of you are going to take these cameras and adjust the lighting you know your exposure comp and all that you're just going to put it on either gopros you know settings or xtu settings and you're just going to go and have fun with them the real reason i wanted to do this was to let you all see what the Im image stabilization looks like i know i said that already but I mean here you go uh, now I am going to turn it around again and let you guys see what it looks like I had the Sun shining on the cameras before and <laughs> that really you know it really kills the picture in my opinion just washes it out but again back to the reason why I had to redo these I had the exposure comp set to I thought it was minus 0 0.05 which is one step below zero and in reality I had it set to uh, plus 0 0.5 which is one step above so when you go above zero it gets brighter and when you go below zero it gets darker and I did not want to go brighter I was trying to make it darker so I kept looking at it saying why is this image so bright well I figured it out also, I had the XTU set to their automatic uh, color setting, and what that does is it tries to adjust for the lighting, and it changes the lighting. So basically, when I had it set in the lighting setting, I had it set to auto. Right now, I have it set to landscape, and that's what I should have had it set at. Uh, you can set it to spot, which basically means spot metering. Or you can set it to landscape, which basically just looks at the whole picture and gives it a setting. You know, that's that's where I should have been running it. And uh, I had it, 
I screwed myself and I had to set to auto. So, all right, so that's it. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to do a spin and let you guys see what slow motion looks like on these cameras at 4K 60 frames per second. Okay, we are now, we're gonna do a real quick spin. So, here we go. I'm gonna wave. So, here we go. I'll wave again. I'll wave again. I'll wave again. And we'll go ahead and slow that and post. Wow, that one would made me dizzy. Went a little longer than I should have. Uh, I've got these cameras set way in more than what I normally would because I'm trying to get an image on each side so when I do a split screen it doesn't look weird. But anyways, again, it's just amazing that I just get sunlight. You know, look, look at these clouds. It's been raining for like three days straight. The other day when I recorded, I thought, awesome, I finally got the shot. But, no, nope, I didn't. <laughs> and I had to do it again, and it's not gonna be sunny again for another two days. And the sun came out, and it was like, oh man, okay, I'm, I've got a chance. Let's go ahead and, you know, record this one more time. So, all right guys, I've yammered on long enough. Let's go in and finish editing this okay what we're gonna do is we are going to take this lighter and I'm gonna try to light it in front of these cameras and let you guys see what that looks like now we're shooting 1080p 120 frames per second so let's see what this looks like slowed down All right, I'm hoping it wasn't too bright that we couldn't see that, but let's see if that looks like slowed down. Okay, we are now shooting in 720p, 240 frames per second. So let's go ahead and light the lighter and see what it looks like now. I, and the sun's coming out, so hopefully we can see it. If not, I'll come up with something else. So let's see what this looks like. 720p, 240 frames per second.
All right, there you go. That was uh, 720p, 240 frames per second. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. Well, everybody, I hope you liked the video. I tried to keep it as short as I possibly could, but you guys know I do not do short videos. And I was not trying to say that one camera was better than the other in any regard, okay? So I don't want you to think that. What I was trying to get across in this video was the video quality in a $200 action camera like the XTU can be as good as an action camera costing double, all right? You guys know how I feel about GoPro. I've been using GoPro from the start. This was actually one of my first YouTube video cameras was my GoPro Hero 5, okay? And I've said it in the past that when GoPro came out with the GoPro Hero 7 Black, that's when they got real, real serious about their image stabilization. And it is freaking butter smooth. I love it. Now, I do know that the brand new GoPros that they have out, from what I hear, the image stabilization is slightly better than what they have here. Although, I don't know how it could be much better than this. You know, you would think if the image stabilization is too smooth, then it starts looking weird. So, again, that's where we come into the XTU X1. And from now on, I'm just going to call it the XTU. This thing has phenomenal image stabilization. And as you guys saw in this video, from what I could tell, the image stabilization coming out of this camera is just as good as what's coming out of my GoPro. And again, that's from my perspective. You guys, Look at the video, tell me what you think. And holy cow, man, I have had such a hard time recording this video. I couldn't even begin to tell you guys all the issues I've had. Number one was rain, rain and cloudy skies. It took me about a week and a half to do this video because of the cloudy conditions outside. And you all know, I've said it in the past, in order to get the best quality you can out of any of these action cameras, including GoPro, is you've got to have really nice weather conditions if it's cloudy out your video quality is not going to be as good as it would be if it was really nice and sunny out that's what these cameras were made for outside in the sun having fun all right i mean it's that simple okay so bottom line xtu gave me this camera for reviewing and again, I told you all, I was not going to pull any punches as far as it went for what I thought about this camera. And the only thing, and I mean the only thing, that I can find that I would say I would change if it would be me, is being able to put in the microphone that you want to put in. Now, you can do that with a GoPro, but, but, <laughs> you've got to buy that $65 attachment that allows you to put a 3.5 millimeter jack which comes off of all of my different microphones into this camera but at least GoPro gave me that option to run whatever microphone I wanted to run yeah it cost me a lot to be able to do it but they gave me that option I really wish XTU and all of the other action cameras out there like it would give us that same option that would just be phenomenal now, I don't want to make this video too long. Again, I know I've already said that, but I love the way this camera is set up. It's just so easy to use and go through the menus. And from what I understand, the brand new GoPro that they have out, the settings are pretty close, kind of, to the way this one is. I also, at first, didn't like the fact that you couldn't get different view aspects in settings all right just like you do with all the other action cameras i have including the gopro but again xtu gives us that option to hit the plus or minus right on the screen while recording and change your view aspect that way so i'm actually getting kind of used to that and i'm actually liking this way better than the other way because again i can change it while i'm recording and that's just something i really really like so again bottom line is xtu has done a hell of a job with this camera and uh, i've got to give them kudos for it because you know they're stepping outside the box with this camera now with that said i also wanted to mention that it's weird how close this camera is to all of the other action cameras that i did lately 
my Can Park and my Acaso. Uh, they they just look so much like this camera. I mean, if I wouldn't look to see XTU on the front of this, I could accidentally pick up the Acaso or I could accidentally pick up the Can Park. They look that close to each other. But that's where the similarities stop. Again, this has a Sony sensor in it. You guys know how I feel about Sony. In my opinion, Sony has one of the best sensors on the market, uh, at least in their video cameras. And I like the picture that Sony gives me. Yeah, I know, I've got a lot of Canon cameras, but again, Sony just, I think, gives, in my opinion, and for what I like, the best picture quality, okay? We could argue up and down about that. Don't let it fool you that just because it looks like the Acaso or that it looks like the Cam Park, they're not. They are entirely different cameras. Remember the issue I had with the Cam Park? Yeah, it was waterproof, like this, but you couldn't record slow motion footage. Well, you could, but only 60 frames per second in 1080p. And they gave you no options for 240 frames per second. This thing, just like the GoPro, you know, you can record slow motion, 120 frames in 1080p, 240 frames in 720p. And just like the GoPro, this has 4K, 60 frames per second, and you've got image stabilization in 4K, 60 frames per second. All these other cheaper action cameras, they give you that 4K, and some of them give you 4K, 60, but you don't have image stabilization in that upper frame rate. So if you want to try to do a little bit of slow motion footage, you've got no image stabilization to make that footage look good. So again, it's a great camera. I know it seems like I'm gushing over this camera, and guys, I'm not. But when I find something I like, you know I don't pull any punches and I tell you how I feel about it. I like this camera. And again, I just want to thank XTU for giving me the opportunity to test it. Okay, now I, I will be making some more videos on that camera, putting it against my Cam Park and putting it against my Caso Brave 7 LE. I think that's the one that it's if we want to put this camera against something, I want to put it against the Acaso Brave 7 LE because other than the non-waterproof issue, unless you put it in its waterproof case, they're pretty close to each other as far as specs go. I want to see what it looks like as far as image quality goes. Last but not least, I told you all XTU was going to send me another product and they I got it. And this is the Smart Home Video Doorbell. So expect an unboxing and review video on this all right everybody i've kept you way too long uh, i just want to thank you all for watching don't forget as soon as i hit 5,000 subs i'll be giving away my personal canon t6i to one of you with the kit lens that's on it and three batteries so if you're not subscribed get subscribed and share my videos that's going to be the quickest way i can get to 5,000 subs so, with that being said, I just want to thank you all again for watching, and I will see you on the next one.